Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean. And whether it's your Thanksgiving turkey or your taters that put you to sleep, I'm here today to wake you up with some wonderful recipes that you can use up all those leftovers in. And the first recipe that we're gonna start with is a very simple but yet very delicious turkey pot pie. And then here comes my favorite, my crispy potato croquettes. They're better the second time around. But y'all don't forget to save room for dessert because I'm making the most succulent pumpkin bars that's gonna put that old pie recipe to shame. So y'all put away your plastic containers and join me in the kitchen because with these leftovers, we ain't gonna have a scrap left on the table. My second favorite thing about Thanksgiving is, well, the first favorite thing is I'm with my family. I just love that. But the second favorite thing to me about Thanksgiving is the leftovers. There's nothing that makes me happier than a leftover turkey sandwich. Well, today I wound up with a lot of leftovers. So I wanna find some ways to incorporate my leftovers into a brand new dish that the family's not gonna realize that they're really having leftovers. And you know, I make chicken pot pies, I make seafood pot pies. Well, why not a turkey pot pie? So that's what I'm gonna do with this leftover turkey. Now I'm gonna begin with a store-bought puff pastry. This is one sheet of frozen puff pastry that's been thawed. And I've dusted it with a little flour so that I can work with it and it not stick to my hands. And I'm gonna start by cutting strips of our puff pastry with a fluted wheel. Now, if you don't have a wheel, you can use just a regular plain knife and it'll just give you a straight edge. But this is what your puff pastry is gonna start out looking like and this is what it's gonna look like after we cut it. I've got some cut and ready to lattice over here. I've already started the lattice work. Now I've gotten two pieces down. Now I'm gonna raise the two pieces of pastry that are underneath the last strip of pastry that went down. I'm gonna lay them back and then nestle that other strip right there. And then now the opposite strips are on the bottom and I'm just gonna lift those up and lay the last strip right there. And you can see we've got a pretty lattice topping. Now, if you feel like this is too big for the container that you're gonna put it in, all you have to do is trim your edges to fit your pan. It's just that simple. You can make it work with just, just a spin of the wheel. All right, now we're gonna put this in the oven and we're gonna bake it until it's a light brown and it's puffed up. Now, you don't wanna overcook this or over brown it because after we get the, the center of our pot pie done, we're gonna put this on top of that and it's going back in the oven. So you'll wanna make sure that you don't get it too dark that first go around. Now I've got an egg and a little milk, and I'm just gonna give it a brush. And this is gonna make our puff pastry uh, real shiny and, and, and brown. It's gonna be just beautiful. And we cook our crust the same way at the restaurants, but we have air-driven convection ovens. That air from those convection ovens kind of blows these edges up every which way, so they'll come out all funky and pretty. Well, this one's more than likely, because I'm cooking this in a regular oven, just gonna kind of lay down. So let's get this in the oven. Okay, now for the filling for our pot pie. I'm gonna start with a 
onion, one whole diced onion, I'm going to use two cups of butternut squash that's been cooked and diced. Ooh, those onions are smelling delicious. All right, now to this pot, I'm going to add two cans of cream of celery soup, two cans of cream of cheddar soup. You could change this to cream of chicken or cream of mushroom. All right, I'm just mixing that up, and I'm going to add one cup of whole milk. And then I'm going to fold in that surprise ingredient. We can't have turkey without cranberries, can we? So I'm going to fold in one can of whole jellied cranberry sauce. And you can see the whole berries. So we're just going to have everything in this one pot. Now we're going to throw in our leftover turkey. And I'm using white and dark meat. And we're just going to let this simmer. So I'm going to take a quick break, clean up. And when we come back, we're going to finish our turkey pot pie. And then I'm going to be making my favorite food in the whole entire world, a potato croquette. So y'all don't go anywhere. Okay, now for the filling for our pot pie. And you can see it's nice and hot and bubbly. And when we put it in the oven, that's the way we want it. We want it really bubbling. So we're safe to go ahead and ladle this up into our casserole dish. Now you'll want to make sure that when you fill your dish up, that you fill it up high enough for the bottom of your puff pastry to touch it. Otherwise, you know, you could sling off the crust because it's got nothing to stick to. it just kind of run around on top of the dish and you don't want that. I don't want to overfill it because when I put it in the oven, I don't want it baking over. Okay, so let's check on our puff pastry now and see if it's done. And then we're ready to put this in the oven. Oh, and look how pretty that turned out. Gonna need to get a spatula. How's this for a spatula? <laughs> that should do the trick, shouldn't it? All right, now I'm just gonna lay this crust right on top of our filling. And you see how I'm pressing that down for that crust to kind of sit down in that hot juice. All right, so in the oven, this is going to go. Now, let's move on down here to what Paula's really been waiting on, and that's a way to use up my leftover mashed potatoes. Okay, so I've got my leftover mashed potatoes, two egg yolks, and about three or four chopped scallions, or green onions, whatever you call them. All right, so we've got that mixed up good. Now, over here in this plate, I have some fresh breadcrumbs, and that is fresh breadcrumbs, not the kind that you buy in the canister from the grocery store. I've tried it with both, and your soft, fresh breadcrumbs just work a lot, lot better than your dried ones. And all we're going to do is just take a little mound of our potato, kind of pat them into a croquette shape, and then we're going to roll them into our breadcrumbs. And I've got a tray going here that I already had made. So we're going to be ready to start cooking these croquettes like right now. All right, our grease is ready. I'm frying these probably in about a half an inch of peanut oil. I 
I just love these. And just remember, y'all, you don't want to put too much oil in your pan. In fact, I think I almost put a little too much in here. Uh, you want this to come up not quite halfway of your croquette. But these are looking mighty fine, y'all. All right, I'm just flipping these over now. Gonna let them brown on the other side. And you'll want to handle these fairly gently because that mashed potato is really kind of delicate. You know, it's, I mean, it's not like handling a piece of meat. It's very, very soft and, and delicate. All right, so some of these are ready. Look at that croquette. Can't help but wonder. I want that, I wonder what that would taste like if it had shrimp in it. I may have to try that next time. That sounds really, really wickedly good. All right, well, those others are continuing to fry, so I think our pot pie is probably ready to come out of the oven. So let's see if that's, oh yeah, that's ready. Look how good that looks. Isn't that pretty? And I love the looks of that potato right there. Oh, and for the friend I've been waiting on. Mm. I'll always, as long as I live, love a potato like no other food. I'm gonna polish it off and when we come back, I'm gonna share with y'all a wonderful way to use up those 30 cans of pumpkin that you got in your pantry. So I'll see you back when we're making frosted pumpkin bars and you're gonna love them. Mm. Y'all, I swear to Pete, I keep making the same mistake over and over. When I go grocery shopping for my holiday meals, I so want to make sure I have enough that I use the overbuy. And I did that again this year. I've got enough cans of pumpkin in my pantry to choke a horse. So I immediately want to find a way to start using that pumpkin. And I'm doing that through a recipe called a pumpkin bar, and it's so good. And we're going to start with one and two-thirds cup of sugar and one 15 ounce can of pumpkin. And now this is straight pumpkin. It's not a pumpkin pie filling. And then we're gonna add a cup of oil. And then we're just gonna cream this together. And I think you're just gonna love this recipe. This is a recipe that was shared with me uh, from a friend named Patty Ronning. All right, now I've got this creamed up. Now we're gonna add one egg at the time. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. I don't wanna sling it all over myself though. All right, and then goes the last egg. All right. So we're gonna just let that sit right there. So let's move down here and mix up our dry ingredients for our pumpkin bars. I've got two cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. And we're just gonna mix those dry ingredients together. And then we're gonna move back down here and we're gonna put, put them into our pumpkin mixture. We're going to be frosting this with an, a cream cheese icing that's very, very, very much like the icing that you would put on a carrot cake. We'll give that a little speed, turn him up some. We're just gonna pour this in here and then I've sprayed this pan so they won't stick. Uh, the oven's been preheated to 350 and we're gonna bake it for about 30 minutes. 
my mouth is already watering because I know what this is going to taste like. We're going to let it bake for 30 minutes and then I'm going to take it out of the oven and we're going to let it cool because we can't put our frosting on the bars while they're hot. So in the oven it goes. And I've got one back here that's cooled and waiting on us. And see how pretty that looks. All right, so let's move on down to this end and put all of our frosting ingredients together. I've got one stick of butter and one eight ounce package of cream cheese softened to room temperature. I've got two teaspoons of vanilla flavoring. And then I've got two cups of powdered sugar that I'm just gonna run through the sifter. Powdered sugar is pretty, pretty good. It's not nearly that lumpy. You can see everything went through except for a few of the beads. So that was pretty good. So let's move back down here with our mixer. We'll take the dirty beaters out and put in some clean ones. and we're just gonna mix all those ingredients until they're smooth. All right, so Patty tells us to cut our bars into rectangular shapes, about like this. And then Patty says to remove them and frost them with your icing. Look at that. It is so moist. I mean, it's like it's wanting to come apart in my hand. Since you've cut them, you could cut them even smaller and almost make them like a petty four. I don't think these are going to be around for very long because while they're not hot, they're still just a little bit warm. Michael Groover is gonna be on these like white on rice. He'll have them gone before I can turn around. Y'all, I got to run out of here for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna finish frosting these while we're on break. And I can't stand it, I got to taste it. And when we come back, I'm gonna share some tips with y'all. So I'll meet you back here in the kitchen in just a minute. So good. <laughs> I just love this tip because you don't see this very often. Does anybody make pickled peaches out there anymore? I remember my grandmother making them, but you can pick them up at the grocery store. But I want to show you how very simple it is. Now I'm going to add two cups of sugar to my pot to one cup of vinegar. And this is going to make a nice syrup and I'm gonna drop a few cinnamon sticks in the pot and I'm gonna let that start cooking. And over here, I'm gonna be working on the peaches. There's a couple of ways that you can peel your peaches. You can cut a little notch in the top, drop them in boiling water for about 60 seconds and the skins will slip right off. Otherwise, you can peel them with a potato peeler very quickly and easily. And what we're gonna do when we've got our peaches peeled is we're gonna stud them with cloves. And this clove is gonna give them a wonderful, wonderful flavor. We're gonna drop our peaches down into our syrup and we're gonna cook them until they're soft. And that'll probably take about 15 minutes. We're gonna drop them down into our jars that have been sterilized with new lids that have also been sterilized and I'm gonna seal them up and I'm gonna not water bath these because I'm gonna just put them in the refrigerator. They're good for up to two weeks. But what a wonderful way to send your out of town family members home than by tucking a jar of homemade pickled peaches into their hands as they leave. They're gonna love you. 
and they're going to remember what a fabulous time they had with you. Y'all, I couldn't believe when I went to my refrigerator this morning and saw all those leftovers. But you know what? I managed to use up almost every one of them in today's recipes. The potato croquettes, y'all, I tell you what, I think they were better today than they were as mashed potatoes yesterday. And Patty's pumpkin bars, oh my goodness, you're gonna love them. You're gonna wanna make those year round. And of course, the turkey pot pie, y'all, it's a great way to use up that leftover turkey. You know, I really hope that y'all's Thanksgiving has just been overfilled with family and friends and love and lots of, lots of good food. Until it's time to do it again, y'all, I want to send you best dishes and love from my kitchen to yours.